All right, so we did a full team rating, but it's also kind of cool to do break up the offense and the defense and get a, a rating for each team uh, separately. So to do that, we're going to have to add quite a bit more to our uh, Excel here. So I broke up the offensive and defensive categories. Remember, we're going to need the average here, so make sure you have those formulas in there. Just starting with random numbers. Initially, we're going to let the solver go to work on these offensive and defensive ratings. Same thing with home edge. We're going to still keep that as a named column. Name cell, I mean, just have a random number three in there for now. And then this is the average uh, points scored in the NFL in an NFL game. So we're going to start with 25, but we're, we're going to also give that to Excel as a changing cell to work with in the uh, calculation as well. All right, so rating, this is still an overall offense versus defense. We don't need that right now. This is our underlying data here, the home points, away points, home team, away team. That hasn't changed. Um, home forecast. Okay, this is a new one here. So the cell, we're going to give home, half of home edge to the home team, and we're going to subtract half the home edge from the away team. There's been a lot of research done into what really causes home field advantage. Nobody really knows just yet. So as of right now, going to give just half of the edge to the, the home team and negative half to the away team. So to, to do that, 0 0.05 times the home edge, and then we're going to plus a VLOOKUP similar to what we already had written in the previous one. Lookup 2, did I change that? Okay, Lookup 2, remember we only had in Lookup, named Lookup, we only had uh, the team name and then the overall rating category. Now, Lookup 2, we have uh, the team name and then the offensive and then the defensive rating. And that's going to be really important as a differentiator in this uh, formula here. All right, so VLOOKUP H6, so when the home team is the Patriots, I want you to look, Excel, I want you to look in this selection, which is named LOOKUP2, I want you to grab the second column, which is the offense, and then the false here to finish that formula. So that's the rating for the New England offense, and then we're going to add that to the, to the opposing team, the away team's defense. So for that, I'm going to add that plus... Um, and, and defense is negative, right, the way we set it up. So a good defense is going to have a negative number. So if you look up I-6 when it's Kansas City Chiefs, I want you to look up in this selection and find the Chiefs and grab the third column because that third column here you can see is defense and then false and then plus the mean, which is the average uh, points scored in the NFL. So there we go. We have the home forecast for the Patriots going up against the. And again, these are not these are not correct numbers. So that these aren't correct yet. But this is what the formula is saying. And then the the solver is going to go and find these best fit numbers. All right. So that's the home away. Right away, you can see the negative 0.5. So the negative half the home edge against the away team. And then VLOOKUP H6, so this is the home team defense now. Look at So it's the same formula, H6, LOOKUP2, but it's the third because I, now I want the home defense. And then plus VLOOKUP I6, which is the away team, um, but now change their category, column number to 2 because we want their offense now. False and then plus the uh, mean average scoring and that's going to be a changing cell as well that we let the solver attack. But So there's the away forecast. And then the squared error is important for the solver to find the best fit of all these. So now we're going to go F6 minus K6, blue minus red. So the home actual points versus the forecasted points squared plus the away actual points minus the away forecasted points squared as well. And that's how we're going to grade how close we are to the projections. And then keep this, the sum of squared errors at the top, which is just the sum formula for all of the different games. All right, so with that, we are ready to let the solver go to work. Okay, set objective. We are trying to minimize the sum of squared errors. So M4, minimize by changing which cells. So the selection of offense and defense. So I'll go ahead and do that one again. Grab both of those, so change these. Also comma the home edge, so you can let the solver mess with the home field advantage. Also let the, the solver figure out the average point scored for an average NFL team here. And then the constraints, we want these to be the average of the ratings, both offensive and defense, to be zero. All right, keep this one unchecked. GRG nonlinear is good. 
let the solver go to work. All right, keep solver solution. And here we go. So average is zero. Now we have a offensive rating. Negative is worse. You want to have a positive offense. So right here you, so you can see Baltimore positive. Um, Detroit positive five. That's really good. Rams eight, really good. Uh, in fact, that's the top in the league. This is, again, 2017 data. And then defense, you want negative. So Falcons, uh, negative three. And Bears, negative three. Jaguars, negative three. And there you have it. Vikings, wow, negative six. Best defense in the league. All right, what do we make of this? This is cool because it gives us the projected, basically, team total of each team. So the Patriots projected before the game using 2017 data, 29 points, the Chiefs 21 points. But what I did, we did this for now week one of the NFL season coming up. Again, this is using all 2017 data, regular season data, nothing yet in 2018 and no adjustments made for players um, acquired, lost, returning from injury, none of that. So a couple of the interesting ones that I highlighted, the Vikings using just last year versus the 49ers, projects the Vikings 27 points to the 49ers 12. This spread right now I think is 6. Uh, Vikings projected to win by about 15. If you just use last year's data, now I know Jimmy Garoppolo, how much how much of a uh, point spread adjustment do you uh, allot for that? Well, I highly doubt that it's going to be upwards of... I don't know, 10 points, <laughs> go from 15, the spread is six. So they're giving him about a, uh, a nine point adjustment. I think that's probably way too much. Would expect the Vikings uh, roll in week one game. That would be one pick if you're, if you're betting based on this model. Uh, Patriots also, uh, Houston was just a really bad injured team. Of course they have Watson back. Now they have some of their key defenders back too. How much of adjustment? Nobody really knows. But if you just go on last year's data, New England's going to destroy this Texans team, 35 to 17. Um, it's up to you how much to adjust, uh, for those players back. Good luck with that. Uh, same thing, New York, Jacksonville, just on last season, Jacksonville would be projected to win by about 12. This spread is about three, so the odds maker is the betting market, generally giving the Giants a lot of credit for uh, Beckham back, uh, new running back, uh, new coach, new system, but uh, might be a little bit too much of a overreaction, and Jacksonville still with a, a lot of their team back, maybe ready to roll New York, although they are on the road in that game. Seattle was another interesting one. This is, keep in mind, these are adjusted for home field. You can see the negative uh, home field edge on the away projection and the positive half home edge for the um, home team. But Seattle projected to win by about, well, that's about four, five, six points. Six points on the road, and that's accounting for home field, but they're, I think they're, I think they're getting three. So that's a, that's a really big adjustment there. Um, for the Broncos, who were a really bad team by the by the stats, by the numbers, their results last year. Packers, this is a really interesting one. Um, I really like the Bears this year, some of the moves they made. Even without any of the moves, just taking last year's data, um, they should only be, fit, be underdog by about two points on the road to Green Bay. But they have a new coach. They have a lot of their frontline starters back. They just traded for Khalil Mack. A um, lot of reasons to like the Bears, and even if you didn't have any of those reasons, they were actually probably still a pretty good bet uh, just based on last year's data. But the Packers also have Rodgers back. They also have uh, a couple of linemen back, so that's not completely fair. Uh, both teams were missing a little bit at the start of la the end of last year, and uh, uh, but I really like the Bears, just what I see there. And then Rams here, the other one that stood out, Rams by about 11 on the road versus Oakland. Of course, new head coach. Gruden with Oakland, messing with that public perception, but the Rams were just absolutely killers last year in the regular season. How much will that continue? How much is this perception at this point spread being pushed down by the Rams? Didn't didn't play any any uh, preseason games. I don't think that matters one bit, but I think the market thinks it does. So we got the Rams by about 11 using this model. Um, point spread right now is about three. So um, highlighted in green, the, the leans here. It'll be kind of fun to track these throughout the the season, but this would be uh, initial leans for week one. Along with the total over here, one of my favorite totals is the under Green Bay Chicago, although new scheme for Chicago, um, Rodgers and an offensive lineman back, but still a pretty low, low projected uh, point total there.